What's up guys? I know a couple of months ago we did a short video about brood boosting this queen. Uh, we have covered all the colonies thus far. The main colony, the Pennsylvanicus colony here. We've gone over the Castaneus colony here. And now in this video we're going to go over the update and the after effects of brood boosting the new Pennsylvanicus queen. Stay tuned, watch the entire video because I'm going to give you an update on the Laceus Americanus as well. And we can check and see how they are doing. All right, everybody, welcome back to s and YouTube channel. As we talked about in the intro, we're going to go over the effects of brood boosting. So I've covered this in a couple different videos. Um, I've covered it in how to brood boost. Also did an update on brood boosting this colony again from this colony. This colony is the main Pennsylvania, excuse me, the main Pennsylvania colony, which is uh, we're going to have an update on this in the coming months. It's going to be very exciting. So we're going to hold off on that one. But we took some pupae from this colony and added it to this pens pens excuse me, this Pennsylvanicus colony here. And we're going to show what the effects are. So I'm going to take the cover off and give you guys a good shot in. This colony is doing wonderfully. As you can see, they have taken off. Um, they are quite a bit in number. They do have a lot of all stages of brood. So they, you, you have pupae they're carrying around back there. You have larvae that are on top of the uh, humidity chamber. And there are eggs back there um, somewhere. I seen them yesterday. I uh, just took them off the heat. You can actually see the queen center frame right there in the back on the wall. They are doing wonderfully. She is uh, doing a lot better than I expected. Uh, I'll do the brood boosting video here. It will pop up. And then I will do another, uh, the second brood boosting pop up here um, for the before and after. But if you watch these two videos, this queen was struggling a lot. Um, I got her by herself. This is the queen that I raised from just herself, no workers at all. Uh, she did start some brood. Again, we have some new subscribers, so I can give you an update on you know this entire process. But she was by herself. She was, uh, I had her in a, uh, just a test tube set up. It didn't really work out. I put her in the discus back here. That didn't work out. And I really, really wanted this queen to do well because I had already done um, so well with this colony. And this colony may have set some expectations for me on what the capabilities of a Pennsylvanicus colony can do if fed, watered, and they have um, sugar water, nectar, whatever you feed your ants. I, I, I kind of see the expectation here. So I was hoping this queen could start off by herself like that not the case at all so again if you watch those two videos um if you go back after this and go back and watch those she struggled she ended up having two nanantics so the very first generation of workers she had two of those um and they were uh deformed i guess you could call it uh or they they weren't developed correctly and they came out and she ended up killing them um and from then on she could not start anything so we took some pupae from this colony here threw them in. I put, I want to say it was three pupae I put in there. All three emerged. All three started immediately taking care of this queen. The queen accepted them. Uh, and again, with the experiment we did last video, quite a few corrections came in the comments. I'm going to go ahead and uh, address that now. Thank you for that. Um, I'm not scientifically accurate all the time. Um, I try to be, I'm, I'm a hobby keeper. So I want to make sure that, you know, the, the folks that are everyday keepers kind of understand what I'm going through but if I do end up misspeaking or saying something wrong do correct me and I will, I will thank you in the comments but the genus of Campanatus is all together and then you have the species of Pennsylvanicus and Castaneus here um, and then you do have subspecies of Campanatus Pennsylvanicus not not exactly the, these species but of other ant species so anyway uh, with both of these being the same species I could brood boost them quite easily. She took the, pr the brood on, they emerged, they immediately started taking care of her. And at that point she started to take off pretty slowly, but was, was doing better. She was eating, she was drinking, she was doing all the things that you wanna see in a queen in a new colony. So again, once you go back and watch these other videos, if you'd like to, I introduced, I wanna say four more um, pupae from this colony. When I moved this colony into this nest, out of this mini hearth, I, I nabbed 
four more pupae, threw them in there. So she had a total of six workers that were from this colony, and now we are here. So I will say this major right here is actually from this this uh, this colony. So I did mat, um, take a, a major pupae, which makes the queen feel a lot more safe. They are a little dirty right now. This colony does great with cleaning the trash out of the colony. Zero trash in here, all the trash is back here. Co small colonies like this will keep trash in the corners, but that's neither the point of the video nor important. Um, but this major right here is from that colony and it will actually make the queen feel safer and more comfortable in the nest and she will do better, lay better eggs and take care of the, the workers a little bit better um, once you get past that point where the ants are taking care of themselves, uh, she will start to lay a lot more like you can see back there on top of the uh, hydration chamber. As you can see, we went from six, and I want to say this was um, three months ago, I think. I want to say about three months ago I did this. Um, and now you can see they are well ab above six workers. So I do know that everything's working. I do know that she's starting her own colony and they are taking care of themselves, being self-sufficient. Um, and I don't honestly need to do anything um, more to this colony other than make sure I feed them. I, I feed them about once a week, twice a week. Um, keep them, uh, have them uh, nectar filled up, which they do still have some nectar in there. And if you look back here, um, their nest mate is connected with water right here. I'm sorry for the glare, but right here. Um, that's how they drank water. So this colony itself is doing fantastic. Uh, she's done really well. This is really prime example on what can go absolutely right if you do brood boost. And I do know that video did extremely well. Um, thank all of you that have watched it. Thank all of you that are new, that have subscribed to this channel. If you haven't, hit the sub, hit the bell, hit the like if you're enjoying this content. All of you are, have done so good, you know, giving me feedback commenting liking the videos the whole everything and that video did so well that i think a lot of ant keepers are trying to brood boost their colonies um or trying to figure out how because when i went online there wasn't actually a lot of research or not research but a, not a lot of resources online to do this other than like forums and we all know you know form browsing is quite boring and some people just don't read very well or don't like to read so they watch videos instead so that video did really well this is a prime example of what can go right with that so she's doing great um i just wanted to show everybody how they're doing what what's the uh activity in the nest which is great um i do have plans for this entire setup i'm going to do a rework of all the colonies here soon um i might do it towards the end of the year I might not, I don't know, because we're, we're actually hitting into the fall around here. Um, we will have to address hibernation here soon. Again, I know a, not, a lot of you are new, um, so I will show you guys again how I do hibernation and uh, diapause for these ants. Uh, that way, if you don't know how to do it, I can give you some ideas on how to do it. So, we're going to eventually, um, we have a new nest planned for this colony. They will keep the outworld because they are so many that I think this outworld will be their permanent outworld. So this this will be replaced here soon, hopefully in the next month, and I will have a video on this one. Uh, the Castaneas colony will eventually move into this nest, and then these uh, Pennsylvanicus colony will eventually move into this fortress. So we have a little tiered system going on where every time we upgrade uh, the Pennsylvanicus nest, uh, the other ant colonies follow suit into the old habitats um, or formicariums uh, just to make sure they have space. Now, the Castaneas colony is doing great. They actually have quite a bit of space in there. Um, as you can see, they're, all their chambers are not even close to being full. So once we evacuate this formicarium, it will be empty for a little while until these catch up to, to be able to make the jump because you don't want a nest that is too big for an ant colony or you'll end up with loads of trash inside of the nest where they think this is their living space and then this is their dumping space whereas we want this entire section to be their living space and this up here to be their dumping ground so we can clean it up just like this nest does so i need to actually clean this so that's the update on them and then we're going to go into a shot of the laceus americanus update uh just for a little bonus for you guys and show them i got i got some good news i'll be right back all right so we're back this is one of the queens and as, if you remember and watching this video sorry for the glare we caught about 10 or so of these queens um, two weeks ago, I want to say, maybe three weeks ago. I have singled out one of the queens, and I want to show you why. And it's going to be very hard, but so you can see her 
right here. And you can see at the very tip of my finger, she's laid eggs. So, like I told you in the video, if you keep, if you capture about quite a bit of queens, you will hopefully at least get one that will lay eggs. So this is a guarantee that she has laid eggs. Now, this is not a guarantee that she's fertile. As you can see, I did drop some uh, nectar in there for her to fill up on. Um, I wanted her to have as much energy as she needed to to start this colony. But um, this is just a simple test tube setup. You got water all back here. You put water in first, you put a cotton ball in, you put the queen in, and then you cotton ball the top. And you just leave her in this. And I've left her in the diapause chamber or the mini fridge. But all it is is unplugged from the wall. I have them inside of the mini fridge. And like I said, you can see with my finger, it gives a little bit more color. Um, the white on the tip of my fingers is a bunch of eggs. Now it's very, I don't want to twist and, and turn them too much. You can see that there is, a, I want to say maybe five or six eggs right there. Um, now again, this may not mean she's fertile. Um, queens are known to lay eggs and not be fertile and then they just don't ever develop into uh, larvae. And that would not be fun, but this is a good sign. So we're getting there. Now I don't have any of the queens that have laid eggs. This is the only queen so far that has laid eggs. And as you can see, uh, she is quite full on the nectar. So she's been drinking on it, which is good. Um, and she does have water. She needs that as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to throw her back into the uh, mini, uh, mini fridge and leave her alone. And hopefully this will become a colony that will eventually get moved into the discus back there. Right there. Where my finger's at. Um, once they get big enough. Now, again, this particular queen, and if she does start a colony, will be in this particular test tube setup or another test tube setup for a, a while. For Campanatus, it's a little bit different. You can get about 10 workers in these test tube setups and then move them into um, a mini hearth. But, uh, and, and they'll do very well. But these smaller ant species, uh, you do not want to do that with because uh, she needs quite a bit of workers to fill out that space that is inside and again that goes back to the conversation we had earlier you don't want to give them too much space because they will feel uncomfortable and uh stress themselves out and kill and they'll die so you don't want to do that you want this this particular species i'll probably wait until they have 50 um in here and i know that's hard to imagine that 50 ants in this little tube but these ants the queen is much much bigger than the workers in this particular species so she's pretty big but um, the workers that come out will not be in 50 will easily be um be able to fit in here i can feed them and uh, clean them out and then swap the test tubes around if i need to so a little update on her and uh hopefully she's she's actually sitting on top of those eggs she's got one in her uh, mandibles now but we'll do we'll do an update on them once uh, they get later on down the road so thank you all for watching um if you haven't hit the like button if you enjoy this kind of content if you're enjoying everything that i'm showing you guys i do know that I, I yeah i don't have a lot of nests right now and i don't particularly have a great setup this is actually on my kitchen counter um we're hoping to get like a dedicated room at some point for our ant nests and video recording so we'll get there just not right now if you haven't subscribed uh 90 some percent of you guys are not subscribed that watch these videos uh if you're enjoying it hit the li like button hit the sub button um, and we'll just keep pumping out these videos and updates for you guys on all the colonies. So the Cassinis are being a little, oh, no, nope, there's one out there. So they're being pretty good today. But uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.